Welcome back everybody. Now we're going to apply the colors. And I only use two other colors, black and red. But first I want to give you a couple other tips. When you're trying to find your clown face or come up with a clown face, look at clown pictures. Get some magazines or books. Go to the library. Go online. Find characteristics you like on, on clown faces and adapt those to your own to try out. Don't copy somebody's face 100%, but if you like somebody's eyebrows or somebody's mouth or that, try to take those, those uh, characteristics you like and apply them to yourself. You'll change them uh, to meet your own clown character. Okay, did I forget anything? Um, what makes a clown's face friendly? Ooh. Yeah, that's a good thing to mention. Now, I already told you about keeping your mouth no no wider than the outside of your eyes, but you like to uh, you should tend to try to stay away from any uh, uh, sharp uh, angles. Now you see, I got some sharp angles kind of here on the outside of my eyes. That's okay, I think, because it's not right like in your face. It's off to the side, and occasionally I do round those off sometimes. In fact, I'll just do one of them now so you can just see the difference. But try not to make your mouth real sharp or, your, or the red when you apply it to your lips real sharp and pointed. I think if it's a little softer, it's a little friendlier. Now, you can see this side and then opposed to this side. Like I said, I don't think there's a real big difference there. and I don't think it's, it would be a real problem. But it's something to think about. You don't want to do a, a mouth like the Joker had on, on Batman. You know, that was kind of a big and pointed mouth and way too wide. That was scary. But it was supposed to be scary, too. So. Now, I know I told you earlier that if you wanted to apply a base, now would be the time to apply it. And I'd use a flat, chisel-shaped brush, and I would brush it right up to the edge of the white, okay? Outline the white, and then use my finger to fill in the rest, okay, if you want to do that, just like you did your white. But use the brush to outline the white fur. And then you would have to go back again and clean off the base wherever you want to apply a color, okay. So it does take longer. Now I've already sharpened my pencils and I have a Kleenex here because I, if I get some of the other color on the pencil I like to wipe it off or I can kind of keep the tip a little bit sharper too by rubbing it on the Kleenex. Actually, I grabbed a red pencil and I wanted a black one. So I'm going to do my eyebrows now and I just, I don't do mine very big. And if you're wondering, these are above my eyebrows by at least half of an inch. That's all I do. I just do a real small one. I used to start at the corner of my eye and come all the way around and outline that and do a spot in between, but you know, I think simpler is better, especially when you're starting out or when you've been in the business for 25 years. I'm getting back to being real simple, I guess, but I'm having fun and that's the main thing. And to get a good crisp line, have your pencil held straight out perpendicular to your face. Yeah, that, that works best, except when you're working on the left side, which is harder for me. Well, they're off a little bit, but for demonstration purposes, that's just fine. Now, here's another tip that might help you. <clears throat> when, whoops, when you keep your pencils Store them in the refrigerator. That way when it's time to sharpen them, they sharpen much easier and it's a little easier to apply a little more pressure with it when they're cold actually. And they'll probably last a little longer for you too. Okay? You give that a try and see if it works for you. Now I'm going to apply the red around my cheeks here. I bring that red right up next to the white and I don't worry if I go on the white and it blends a little bit to me that's okay if it blends a little bit when we powder it it, it makes a nice smooth transition it looks okay so don't worry about it if you get over on the white a little bit with your red because remember we're going with a darker color over a lighter color 
works better that way. Now, I don't know if you noticed that or not, but I actually I held the pencil still and part of that moved my face. You might try that too when you're starting out. Sometimes if you hold the pencil and just move your face while you're looking in the mirror, that works better too because you might not have a steady hand. Or like me, if you had three cups of coffee in the morning, you know, you might be a little jittery. So <laughs> think about that. Now I bring those out a little bit. And if you do happen to have a hand that's a little jittery, you can always use your other hand to steady it at the wrist. Yeah, you can hold them both like this, see? Now I'm going to fill that in. I've drawn a couple little bubbles there on my face. Now I want to fill those in with red. I outline it first just to have it. You could continue drawing the one line next to the other until you got it the width you want, but I just draw the bubble about as big as I want. And that's another tip for, for folks. I tend to outline my muzzle and my eyes in a white pencil so I know where my white's going to be applied, and then I apply it within the lines, kind of like a, a coloring book. Yeah, that's another good idea. Um, I don't do that, but I've been applying my makeup for long enough I can get pretty close. But you could use a white pencil and outline your muzzle and your eyes, and then you'd know where to fill into. It would save you time with cleanup. Now I'm going to outline my mouth with this red. I didn't get real close to the line, but that's okay because I actually finished mine up with a brush. I'll show you that in just a second. This little mirror is really giving me a fit here, folks. I recommend a big one. Find out what works for you. A little small mirror might work just great for you. Okay, now that doesn't look very even at all, but I'm going to show you how we're going to fix that. I'm going to put a little hot water on my brush. The water's probably cooling off some now. And this brush doesn't have a chisel end on it. It's, a, it's about a quarter inch wide and it's got just a little bit of a rounded tip, but it does come down flat. It works well. I just go over all the red on my mouth and I smooth it out and work it in because your mouth is going to be moving a lot. So you want to be sure that that makeup's worked in very well and it's nice and thin, okay? Is that kind of the same thing as patting the white? Yes. Exactly, just like patting the white. Now, are you coloring your entire lip, or are you leaving part of it without color? Well, I'll show you. I color my whole lip, and then I take some of it off. My Q-tip again, and I'll take it off the corners of my mouth and about halfway across my bottom lip. I'll turn that Q-tip around and do the same thing on my upper lip. Okay, the reason I've taken that makeup off halfway across my bottom lip and halfway across my top is so when I'm working during the day and I talk a lot with the kids, I don't want the makeup if it gets hot and soft again. I don't want it to transfer. I don't want red to come up on my 
top lip and I don't want white to come down on my bottom. And so if I take it off those two areas, uh, it's really not noticeable when your mouth is closed. I really don't think it's noticeable at any time. So take it but, off the half of the lip that's towards the teeth then. Yes, the half towards the teeth, that's correct. Okay, so now we have that on there. Mm. The next thing we need to do is apply powder. I know I've already told you that I apply baby powder. I go to the dollar store and buy the biggest thing of powder I can for a dollar. When you buy powder though, if you're going to use baby powder, be sure it's 100% talc. You don't want any baby powder that has cornstarch in it because that will get uh, water on it and just makes a gooey mess on your face, okay? So 100% talc. It's okay if it has a little fragrance in it. Now, like I said, they make several powders um, that you can get with uh, places that sell makeup that some of the powders come with an antiperspirant in it. You could try that if you wanted. Uh, you can also get antiperspirant to apply before you put your makeup on. Uh, uh, Proface makes a product called No Sweat. You just put a little on a cotton ball and put it on your face first. And uh, They also make the powder for powdering your face with the antiperspirant. I don't use that. I found it just irritates my skin. So, But if you have a problem with perspiration, you might consider trying those products. Now I just fill a, an old clown sock with baby powder. Now I'm going to hold it over my face and jiggle the sock a little bit. You're going to see the powder is going to come right down. It's going to make a big mess. So that's why I only do it once instead of after every color, okay? Close your eyes. And if you're having problems with allergies and with things, change the makeup, change the powder, change a few things. You might find you've just developed an allergy over time. Right. And change your makeup out at least once a year because it does get old. Okay, now that I've dusted it a little bit overhead, I'm gonna I'm just gonna pat it. Make sure the makeup's dry. The powder will dry it right up. Close your eyes again. And then you can touch it. If you feel any areas that feel a little damp, well, you need to apply more powder. That feels pretty good. Another way of applying powder is I don't use a, a sock with powder. I use a powder puff and I press it on. But I'm careful yeah. not to smudge my makeup. Yeah, you can try that. Um, I was never successful with a powder puff, so I didn't show you that way. Every time I try one of those darn things, I'd smear it. Um, but, but by all means, try it. That might work good for you. Now I'm going to take my powder brush and I'm going to actually push the powder into the makeup now. I'm not going to brush it off yet. I'm just going to push it in. Keep your eye closed again when you do that, okay? I keep the other one open so I can see if I'm getting the whole area. Then around your mouth. And when you powder your mouth, you might not have seen me do it, but I actually put a little bit of the sock in my mouth and I close my lips on it. Make sure I get powder on the lip. Okay, now we've pushed it in, and so now we can brush it off. Some people even paint their noses on rather than to wear a nose. Yeah, that's too. another thing you could do. Now I use a tie-on, a tie-on nose in the summer and a glue-on nose in the winter months. And some people just use a little a, a cap on the end of their nose. My nose is actually pretty good size and, that I wear, but. Uh, again, that's personal preference. If you want to just paint your nose on, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, Pro Nose, the same people that make the Pro Face makeup under a different name, Pro Nose, they make great clown nose uh, for gluing on, and they also make a nice one called Circus Pro that ties on. Several other manufacturers out there of clown noses. So again, just try, try several, find what works well for you. Okay, now I've got the powder. Uh, applied and brushed off and now what I'd take is usually what I take is a, a tear cloth towel but I, I have some paper towels here right now so I get those a little bit damp people tell you to use cold water but you know I like warm better myself feels better so you just pat the makeup now what this does is this takes off any excess powder it might still be on the surface and it brightens the colors back up a little bit. So you'll know, you see when you put it on, just that part of your face once, you'll see how much more vibrant the colors look after you pat them. Now I have a friend that doesn't 
that doesn't do this step at all, and she's perfectly happy uh, not uh, touch it. Now I just rub my neck, and, and actually, because I got short hair, I run through my hair too and just get any powder off that might be up in there. I have several other friends to get their outfits on and then get made up. I can't do that because you can see how much powder I get when I powder. But try it, try different things, see what works for you. Now, after I've powdered, I'll put a little bit of black underneath my eyes. I find it's easier after that white is set, okay? Okay, just a little white there. It kind of stops the eye when people are looking at you. It kind of gives them a, a focal point there, and you want them looking right at you, so that's good. Usually my powder brush has enough powder in it from dusting off that I'll just go back over those and, and push a little bit of powder, comes right off on and sets that little bit of black, okay? And the focus should be on the clown's eyes, is that right? Yes. You want them looking at you. You don't want them looking at your nose, looking at your cheek, you want them looking at your eyes. Just like you're having a conversation with people, you always want to look at them directly. So that's why you put a black line in there, so it, it, stops, the, it stops the gaze, it gives them a place to focus on. Okay, now with the rouge, use a separate brush for your rouge, and they do make rouge brushes, and then this is a dry rouge. I don't even know if they make a wet rouge. I've only ever used dry. So I get it on the, the brush, work the brush into the rouge, and I just highlight my cheeks. Okay, now in lieu of doing base, I'm going to show you what I do now instead, and it saves me a lot of time. I get my cheeks done up good, and I put a little bit more red on that brush, and then I just go over my entire face, just real lightly. I work the red back from the cheeks a little bit. I come across my forehead, under my eyes, down to my nose, and then I get my neck. This adds a little color, like the base would do. Well, it doesn't take me 20 minutes to do it. And you know what? I've not had one complaint doing that for the years I've been doing that. Nobody's ever come up to me and said, hey, Boomer, you're not wearing any base. So it's working. And I like it because it's faster, it's easier. I can get into clown and get out and start having fun sooner. And that's what it's all about. Now, I think I've covered anything. I mean anything, everything. I think I've covered everything with the application of makeup. Again, choose whatever type of nose you're happy with. The style and color of the wig and the hat, accessories and outfit. You're good to go. If you have any questions, uh, refer back to the main menu a screen of this DVD and go to our website and you can email us directly from there and we'd be happy to help you. And I want to take this opportunity uh, now to thank you for purchasing our makeup uh, DVD and we hope we see you down the road soon. How about taking off your makeup real quick? How do you do that? Hey, well I mentioned this earlier in the DVD uh, about using Pro Face Makeup Remover and uh, it's a, a, I don't know if it's citrus based or not, but it smells kind of citrusy when you open it up. I just put a little on my hands, rub them together, and rub it over the makeup. It breaks right up, and you can take it off. Or you could use baby oil or cold cream. And in fact, when I was back at clown school, uh, we used corn oil, just cooking oil. Any kind of oil will break down uh, the grease paint. So use whatever works the best for you. Thanks again.